Classifying bones is relatively straightforward because we are going to classify them by their shape. If you take a look at the diagrams here, the, many of these will start to make sense. So you're going to have a category which is known as long bone. The long bones are going to be those that are longer than they are wide. So the radius, the ulna, the humerus, the fever, the tibia, all of those are long bones, as are the digits or the phalanges of the digits and the metacarpals and the metatarsals. Flat bones are not necessarily flat because if you think about the skull bones and some of the bones of the face and the ribs, they are not flat per se like a desktop. When you talk about flat bones, you're talking about, about bones that are extremely thin. So they are considered flat bones because of the way that they ossify, which is in a membrane. There are going to be a number of bones that are considered irregular bones because they're kind of weird shaped. And there's one bone in the skull, which is known as the sphenoid bone, that certainly fits into that category, as does the mandible as do each of the vertebrae. They are all considered irregular bones. If we have long bones, what a surprise, we have to have short bones. And the short bones that you need to know about are the carpals, which are the so-called wrist bones, and the tarsals, which are so the so-called ankle bone. We'll henceforth call them carpals and tarsals. There's another category of bones, which are known as sesamoid or round bones. And a classic example of a sesamoid bone is the patella, which is pictured in the diagram on the left. These are bones that are going to form in ligaments or tendons. And sure enough, the patella is going to form within the quadriceps tendon. The patella is one that most of us have. There are a few people who do not, which is a uh, normal variant, what's considered a normal variant. Some people may develop sesamoid or round bones in other tendons or ligaments because of wear or tear. It's just a normal variant. It's not something that's going to cause you major difficulty with your health. And most of the time, you won't even know that you have one of these sesamoid bones unless you start to have issues with it. This shows you just more pictures of the same, where upper left are going to be the radius and ulna, which are long bones. Upper right, you have the, you got it, carpals, which are the so-called wrist bones. The lower left, you have the patella, and then you also see the flat bones of the skull and some of the irregular bones that are the facial bones. In addition to these bones, you may have additional bone in your skull. You may have additional bones in your skull, which are known as sutural or wormian bones, and they are a normal variant. So you won't know that you have them until somebody does an autopsy on you. And if nobody does an autopsy on you, no one will ever know you have them. They are totally without symptoms. They are just a normal variant, which are kind of cool. Since we have this lovely picture here, we're going to talk about these, this interconnection in between the skull bones. This is going to be the occipital bone. This will be the parietal bone another parietal bone, and you can see that the sutures, which are considered a joint, an immovable fibrous joint, basically are these interlocking, almost puzzle-like pieces that allow the skull bones to join together. 